Hi friends, welcome back to another episode of Generation Films, my name is Alan. Is life like a movie, or is it just a video game on permadeath hardcore setting? I don't know, but I keep finding cameras all around my house, and I really am addicted to looting and getting new gear. Check it out, new motorcycle gloves, plus five armor, plus two damage, and minus two charisma in social settings. Because only serial killers, people with leprosy, and pop icons from the 80s wear gloves all the time. Anyway, what if we were to combine the two together, movies and video games? It is done a lot, but it usually ends up being pretty bad, because usually these projects are uninspired and driven by greedy individuals who want to cash in on an IP. I'm looking at you, Ubisoft. But every now and then, we see some really good collaboration, like LucasArts' amazing KOTAR series. KOTAR 1 worked because he had a truly amazing IP, which was Star Wars, and he had a talented developer like BioWare behind him. They made a game that was in the spirit of Star Wars, but also added new things we didn't even know we wanted. It's not surprising that fans fully accepted BioWare's new additions to Star Wars as part of the grander story. But besides KOTAR, there aren't that many brilliant video games that came from film. So in today's video, we're going to talk about five films that I would love to make into video games. For any of you guys who have read Max Brooks' Amazing World War Z, you probably were disappointed when they made it into a film. The problem was that World War Z was written as an assortment of short stories, and not really suited for a movie which needs just one long narrative. The book's narrative was more suited for a TV series, or why not a video game? I would have a studio like Fire Axis create a strategic turn-based game similar to XCOM. Instead of deploying a squad of alien killers, you would have a squad of zombie killers. Your job would be to build a base and a network of quick reaction forces that have two missions. One is to make sure that existing human strongholds survive and adapt to the zombie apocalypse, and two is to find and eventually distribute a cure. Missions would be varied and not just limited to finding and killing enemies. The strength of the World War Z franchise, and for this potential game, is that it looked at the behavior and culture of several nations and hypothesized how they would react to a zombie invasion. It's really well researched and well done and believable. In the book, the virus starts in China's illegal organ trade and the government attempts to cover it up just like how they did in real life with the SARS virus in 2003. Israel took all the zombie rumors seriously and built a wall preemptively because it had learned to be prepared for anything after the Holocaust. And North Korea survives by pulling out everyone's teeth and America does well because everyone owns a gun. These nations are the main characters in the story and what makes World War Z such an interesting franchise. In the video game, the player will have to find a way to work with all these nations and their unique quirks and demands and at the same time help them survive against the zombies. That's how I would do it anyway. But it looks like World War Z will be made into a Left 4 Dead co-op shooter, which isn't necessarily a bad thing either. One of the original survival games that I played had nothing to do with zombies or supernatural monsters. It was very basic and simple, and it was about surviving the elements and dysentery, otherwise known as bloody diarrhea. I'm talking, of course, about Oregon Trail, and there's something inherently fun about the roguelike survival genre, and the perfect movie for this game would be The Way Back. The epic tale of a group of prisoners in a Soviet gulag and their escape. This would be an amazing 4,000 mile journey across some of the most varied and beautiful landscapes in the world. The players would visit locations like Siberia, the Gobi Desert, the Great Wall of China, and the Himalayas. It would be an adventure game that focuses on resource and risk management. Along the way, the group will have to dodge Soviet patrols, bandits, and wolves. You have to decide how to ration the supplies. There's not always going to be enough for everyone. And you're going to have to make tough decisions like determining who in your party is more useful. You'll have to interact with locals. Do you decide to kill those villagers because you're afraid they're going to rat you out, or do you hold on to your humanity? There should be a heavy emphasis on character development and a beautiful art direction for this game. A developer like Hinterland Studios would be well suited for this. I recently played a game called Homefront, which itself is loosely based on the concept of the film Red Dawn. The game itself was average and forgettable, but it had some beautifully atmospheric level designs, which featured many robotic looking enemies in a futuristic wasteland. As I was playing this game, it started reminding me of another franchise, Terminator. I really like the movies and I've always been fascinated by the future version of Earth, where the resistance is battling the machines. I would create an open world shooter that's based in a post-apocalyptic city that has a heavy emphasis on base building, but in a much more freeform way than say Ubisoft. The game should have randomized patrols of Terminators, and depending on their type, they will adhere to certain patrol rules. It's up to the player to follow and observe the machines and find locations they think the machines would avoid. 
Let's say one sector of the map is only inhabited by T1 Terminators. You know that they run on tank treads, so it might be a good idea to put your base in, say, a skyscraper. But the thing is, the game can begin changing the formula and start using HK aerials to patrol as well. So then moving the base to a subway station might be a better idea. To populate the base, the players will need to take apart in random encounters and save survivors. Combat and gameplay movement should be on the slower end like the Metro series. This is important because at the outset of the game, the player will have no idea how to take out Terminator robots. Only through trial and error and perhaps raiding Skynet servers will they be able to figure out where the weak points in these robots are. The player should never feel comfortable enough that he can just sprint into every firefight gun blazing. I would have 4A Games developers of the Metro and Stalker series head this game. They are one of the most underrated developers out there and they heavily focus on atmospheric gameplay and story. Better yet, most of their games are made only for single player. Crank is a movie you hear me talk a lot about. I just love the premise of the movie. Man gets injected with a poison and the only thing that keeps him alive is adrenaline. He needs to be constantly doing things to keep his heartbeat up like having sex in public places or standing on a moving motorcycle in a hospital gown. Now if you're listening to me tell you guys about this movie and thinking, wow, that would make an amazing video game, you're absolutely right. Think of something that's a mix between Tony Hawk Pro Skater, Katamari, Rampage, Crazy Taxi, and Grand Theft Auto. The player controls Chef Chilios in third person as he fights his way through the city, finding creative ways to keep himself alert and alive. His end goal is to find and kill the man who poisoned him in the first place. Simple enough, right? This would have to be a Rockstar Enterprise or maybe Deep Silver. Immersion is one of the things I look for when I'm playing a video game. That's why I really like VR. But I think the technology isn't there to deliver the exact kind of experience I want just yet. And I think a perfect IP for this type of game would be 300. 300 has amazing visuals and sound design and more importantly, a very limited amount of motion. Basically, you would just be a soldier in a phalanx formation, which would make for a very focused and simplified gameplay. Your movement will be limited. Getting out of formation means you'll get the men around you killed and put yourself in danger as well. When you stay in formation, not only are your flanks protected, you can also initiate cool combos by doing stuff like shoving your enemies into your comrades so they can spear them for you. Everything should be animated in real time, no preset animations, and no weird hitboxes. I would hire Bethesda to make this game because they already have experience in first-person melee from Skyrim and maybe they could use this opportunity to develop a better combat engine for the upcoming Elder Scrolls games, whenever they finally make them. Too many video games and movies nowadays are made solely for profit, and oftentimes video games based on films fall into that category. Developers think that they can just lean on an IP's existing fan base and don't really need to create a good game. But that's so wrong. If anything, they should try even harder when dealing with a big IP. They're literally bringing alive some of the most beloved franchises in the world and letting people interact with them. I see it as a privilege, one that shouldn't be wasted on short-term monetary gain. Well guys, that's all for today's episode. I hope you enjoyed it. Don't forget to subscribe and hit that notification button and like us on Facebook. My name is Alan reminding you that life is a movie and you are the protagonist.